He's a YouTuber, bought a Model S Plaid back in 2022. It lost nearly $100,000 in value in two years. Tesla has dropped the price that much on the Plaid. And a lot of that is because they keep lowering production costs and they're just trying to gain more market share. He doesn't have any real competitors here in the United States. His chief competitor is all those electric car companies in China. Hi, I'm David with EV World News, and I'm back today with our founder and chief editor, Bill Moore. How's it going today, Bill? It is going excellent. Thank you. I wanted to start off today by talking about this one article about this guy who bought, he's a YouTuber, bought a Model S Plaid back in 2022. So he's only owned the car for two years. Okay. So while I was just sort of praising Tesla, this one just, oh, this is somebody who really got screwed here. He lost nearly $100,000 in value in two years. The actual number, I think, was 94000 is what it's listed as. But he has a Model S Plaid, which he bought for $140,000. 1,020 horsepower Model S Plaid. Why won't you spend that kind of money? I mean, because he has more money than he needs. Yes. <laughs> you know, and I think that's why you see a lot of this stuff. He's driven it about 37,000 miles. And he was showing that the trade-in value for the car is now 46400 which means it's dropped $94,000 or $2.54 per mile in depreciation. That's a crazy amount of depreciation. You know, Alex Lawrence out at EV Auto, he took a, bought a Model S Plaid to resell. And almost as soon as he bought it, Tesla dropped the price by uh, about $30,000. So since that guy bought his for 140, the new selling price is 90. So if you bought that same car new, it's only ninety thousand dollars now. Tesla has dropped the price that much on the plaid. And a lot of that is because they keep lowering production costs and they're just trying to gain more market share on whatever they can. So I guess they feel that's a fair price. You know, you get a lot of people to rush. T Tesla is is kind of an interesting brand because you know it's like all the cyber trucks you see. You know, now all of a sudden you're starting to see lots of them around Omaha. You, you're seeing a lot of them around. And it's kind of like the thing with the Plaid. People wanted to be first to have it because it was a really cool thing. The thing, you know, zero to 60 in 1.99 seconds. You know, it's, just, it's a rocket ship. But anyways, you know, it, it's nuts that it depreciated that much. And I, I have a hard time believing it. I mean, that's the trade-in value. I mean, you're not going to go somewhere and find a Model S Plaid for sale for $46,000, okay? If you go to buy that used two years, I, I'm sure it's probably still good. There's probably still going to be asking like sixty five grand for it or something like that. So I, I'm sure he could sell that in a private sale. But still, even sixty five is more than a 50% drop. In. I just was thinking, you know, they are the lessons they're learning in terms of their dealing with the much stiffer competition in China, right? Because... We don't have, they, he doesn't have any real competitors here in the United States. His his chief competitor is all those electric car companies. He's got, you know, a dozen, you know, serious ones and others that, you know, probably build, you know, a few thousand and that's it. He, so he has to learn, you know, I got to maintain my position here in China. And does that, how much of that experience then translates over to how he, you know, markets and, and, controls the pricing and things on the cars here in the U.S. Well, I, I think that, that that's a really good point because he's having to compete with BYD and BYD's home market. And I, I think what's happening is that they dropped the price over in China. They dropped the price in Europe. They dropped the price in the United States. It's not so much that they're just trying to cut prices to compete with the U.S. companies because they certainly really don't have real there's starting to be some cars, you know, in the U.S., like the Mach-E and... Name some more. <laughs> right. I know. It's re it's really a struggle to come up with something that, you know, the Model Y is the best-selling car on the planet, okay? The Ford Mach-E is really about the only U.S.-made real competitor. I mean, we, we've got a couple of cars, you know, like Chevy's got a couple of EVs, but they're not quite the Model Y but they're trying to make some that are a little less expensive, okay, w which is a good thing. There needs to be a, a less expensive move. And then if you switch over to, say, Rivian, their R1S is not a competitor to the Model Y. It's a competitor to the uh, Model X. Yeah, uh, and, and in all fairness, I think Rivian looks at their vehicle 
as being a competitor to a Range Rover, not really necessarily, a, you know, it, it, it appeals to somebody who would have bought a Range Rover and more so than somebody who would have bought a Tesla. Yeah. And I, I'm just saying there, there's a different market there, but absolutely they drop those prices because BYD keeps making moves. I mean, BYD is tight on the heels of Tesla and overall numbers. You know, Tesla is still the number one EV maker in the world, but only by a slim margin, maybe by 10%. And then BYD is the world's number one manufacturer of plug-in hybrids. You know, we don't have BYD in the United States, but they're so dominant in the 80 countries that they're in that it really affects things. And I keep saying this is a wake-up call for the U.S. auto manufacturing industry. Tesla's constantly responding and developing to fight the threats from the Chinese EV makers. Tesla has, has introduced one new model in this time frame of the last year. Right. While BYD has introduced nine and how, depending on how you count, as many as 16 new models. It, that's pretty amazing. I mean, they've introduced minivans, trucks. Yeah, BYD's constantly putting out um, new products, whereas Tesla basically has five models right now. You know, although they, they keep unveiling, you know, maybe a new Roadster, you know, th this new cyber taxi, you know, coming up. But, you know, how soon those will be is another question. Yeah, the rumors back and forth, a Model 2 is coming, a Model 2 is not coming, a Model 2 is, you know. So that cyber taxi looks like what would be the Model 2, because it's only a two-seater vehicle. No steering wheel, by the way. Who needs a steering wheel? You should just be able to think, and it goes. It's all going to be autonomous anyway. That's the future. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.